Hi, welcome to the Kansas City, Kansas Public Library's craft videos. My name is Cheryl and I teach the craft classes at the main library. And since we are on hiatus with the quarantine, um, I'm going to be teaching you a craft class today online. So we are going to be making these lovely little wire wrapped rings out of beads and wire. Uh, now, you will need 12 inches of 22 gauge wire. The gauge of the wire is how many will fit in an inch, so the bigger the gauge, the smaller the wire. 22 is a nice, uh, a nice size for this ring project. If you want something a little bit sturdier, you can maybe go to a 20 gauge but be aware that's going to be harder to work with. You can, for delicate projects, use a 24 gauge, uh, but you'll need more of that because you'll have to wrap it around more times to get a nice sturdy uh, circle for the ring. I like 22 gauge. You will need also beads. Uh, you can have larger beads. You can do multiple smaller beads. I don't know how well you can see this, but I've got two smaller beads on this one that I am currently wearing. And this one is a one larger bead. I think this is about an 10 millimeter, I want to say, bead size. Um, just don't go too much bigger than your finger is across, otherwise you'll have trouble with it. You will also need something to cut the wire. I use wire cutters. You can use scissors, but it dulls the scissors very quickly, so I would recommend investing in one of these. Um, if you don't have one and you can't go out and get one, obviously the stores are closed. You can use scissors, but don't use your good ones. You will need a little set of pliers, needle nose pliers. You can get these at any hardware store, online. You may have some lying around your house. Doesn't have to be necessarily made for jewelry making. And you will need something to wrap the wire around. And in my case, I'm actually using a ring mandrel that has the ring sizes listed with the lines showing you where to wrap them around at. Now, you can get one of these with a set of the ring size measures uh, on eBay for, I'm sorry, on Amazon for about $20. If you don't have one or don't have time to get one or just don't want to do one, you can find things around the house that might have the right sizing. Dowel rods, spoon handles. Uh, I particularly like this brush that I've got, this makeup brush, because it's got the different sizes. It's graduated. Just uh, if you've got one that has a notch in it, stay away from the notch because that'll mess up your sizing. So I've just put some painter's tape around and shoved a, a ring down that I liked that fit me well and I marked where I wanted it. Now you want to mark just a little bit bigger because as you work it, the ring's going to end up a little smaller. So if your ring fits here, mark it down here to the bigger end. And you can do that with anything. Um, anything that has a round shape. Now if you try to use something like this that's oval, your ring will not be uh, correct. But uh, you can also use something you, pro you might have. A turkey baster. It has a nice graduated size. Now it's usually better for bigger rings because it doesn't go down very tiny. But if you have larger fingers or you're doing a thumb ring, this might work too. Anything like that. Lots of things can be used as ring mandrels. Alright, so we're going to get started here. You want to find the center of your wire and then a little bit off center you'll want to make a little crimp, like a right angle. See that? Now, you take your bead 
and slide it on the longer side. Then you're going to want to flatten this out right next to the bead and kind of give it a little pinch so that it looks like that. Now, you're going to set it at about the right size for you around the ring mandrel. And make sure and try and keep your wire on the line that you've chosen. Now, you have one coming off the back and one coming off the front. So the one on the front, you're going to just wrap it around to the back and try and get it a little bit underneath the bead. Now, when you're wrapping, you're going to have to alternate holding and wrapping. So if I'm wrapping with my right hand to keep it from sliding, I'm holding it with my finger on the back so that it doesn't slide too much. And pull it there. Now I'm going to alternate hands because I want to use, I want to wrap the left one and you're going to wrap it around, go back under the bead until it touches itself again. So then you should have something that looks like this. Make sure it's still on the wire, I mean on the line. Now I'm holding these firmly now, the one that's on the back, you're going to wrap it around to the front. And I'm all, I've got to hold it with this hand. Now the one that's on the front, wrap it around to the back. And you're trying to go under the bead. Now, once it's like that, you can slide it off and set that ring mandrel aside for now. So you should have something that looks like this. Now, I like to take the pliers, the needle nose pliers, and flatten out this part right here. Do you see that? I like to flatten that so it's nice and flat. Flip it over and flatten the other side. And these wires should go under the bead, not beside it, under it. should give you a nice flat base for the bead to rest on, if you can see that. Now, if you have a big flat bead that rocks back and forth, you might want to wrap it one more time around to kind of give it an extra sturdiness underneath. This one kind of wobbles back and forth. So I'm going to give it another, wrap it around a little more. And now this one, you don't pull too tight. You just kind of gently wrap it under the bead. If you're worried about it getting, pulling too tight and you got it too small, you can always put it back on your ring mandrel and check the size. I'm going to flatten that one I just wrapped. And on the other side, I'm going to flatten the other one. You don't have to do it twice around. If you have a small ring or if it's tiny beads, you only have to do it once. You only have to do it twice or three times if, if it rocks back and forth and it's a flat, wider bead. Now, we have about, we have a little extra here. Now, we're going to wrap these around and inside. If this is too long to wrap easily, you can always cut off a piece, but don't go down more than an inch. When you're cutting wire, always turn it downward because if you don't, that wire is going to go flying, that little piece, and you're going to find it and step on it sometime, which would not be pleasant. Now you don't want to cut this too short because you want to have room to wrap it around and not poke yourself. Okay, so we're going to wrap this. It's coming off the back right now. You're going to wrap it around and gently push it through and around. Now if you're using fatter wire, 20 gauge or something like that, 
it's sturdy enough you might only have to wrap it around once. For this gauge I like to wrap it around twice. If you're using tiny wire and you're wrapping you can wrap it around three times. Okay so I've got stuff coming off the the side. Now I'm going to do this flip it over do the same thing on this one. And I'm going to try and keep my wires up close to the top. Now you don't want to pull this wire too tight because you might start shortening and, and making the ring smaller. Just, just a gentle snug. Snug but not tight. Wrap it around twice. So I've got that. Now with it pointed onto the outside you're going to snip it as close as possible to the base. That's another reason I like these wires because they have an, an indented side and a flat side and this flat side you can snug it right up against there. Point it downward close to the table and snip. Same thing for the other side right up against it. Point it downward clip. Now You've got these tiny little pieces sticking out that might poke you. So we're going to use the pliers. We're going to flatten that. So what you'll need to do is if you just try and flatten it, it might kind of squish one way or another. So what you'll do is you're going to do it wrapping motion while pushing it down with your pliers. So I'm going to flatten it as I'm wrapping. And you can always, if you're, if it's too loose here, you can always snug these up together. Flat. There we go. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Twisting motion, wrapping motion while I've flattened it, and then I'm going to snug them up together. Now right now you may go, oh that looks horrible, mine doesn't look nice, it's not straight across. It doesn't matter. Nobody's going to be looking underneath your ring. Okay. Now test it and see if you can feel the ends. I can feel a little bit of this end here so it's not quite small enough. So I'm going to try and cut that end off just a little bit more. You do not want it scratching you. Now, you may go, well, I, I want it to look better on the outside. I'm going to put the wire on the inside, the end, and snip it off. Don't ever snip it off inside the ring because you'll have a little scratchy part. That's the part that touches your skin. You'll have a little scratchy part inside the ring, and it will annoy the heck out of you. Okay. So try that on. There you go. Now, is it the most nice, neat, tidy looking ring in the world? No. They're a little bit, a little bit off. I can flatten it a little bit. One of the loops is a little bigger than the other. Nobody's going to notice. People are going to be looking at it this way and go, oh, you made that ring. That's great. They're not going to be looking up inside here and who cares if they do anyway? <laughs> so, you can also use smaller beads. I'm not sure if you can see these. If you use smaller beads, I like to use a smaller wire, but the process is the same. Not on the center, but a little off to the side. You give it a right angle. put the beads on the long end. If I can find the hole, that's always a challenge. Okay. Now we're going to bend this down so that it forms a nice little kind of squared off piece. Now I'm going to use this one this time just to show you. So remember, it's down here. The one on the front goes around to the back, under the beads, and touches itself. Okay. 
swap hands. One from the back goes around the front under the bead and touches itself. Okay. Now, one on the back gets wrapped around to the front. Swap hands. The one on the front gets wrapped around to the back. Now, this is small wire, so if I want, I can wrap it around again. You can actually wrap it around several times. Um, if you do that on a small beads, it will form like a little nest underneath of it, which is kind of an interesting look also. Now, I cut extra of this wire so that I could show you. I cut about 18 inches of this one instead of the 12 inches for the other. And see, as I'm wrapping, I'm swapping hands. If I'm wrapping with my left, I'm holding it steady with my right and vice versa. Okay. Now you see how that formed a nice, delicate, tiny ring? I can flatten this out if I want. The more times you wrap it around, the more you may not want to flatten it as much. If you're going for like a kind of a artistic bird's nest look, you might want it not quite as flattened under those beads. I'm going to cut off about an inch to an inch and a half. Same thing on the other side. Okay. I'm going to wrap it through a few times, and because this is a a tinier wire. This is 24 gauge. I'm going to wrap it three times. Two, three. And on this side, one, two, three. The wire on the outside cut it off close, flip it over, cut it off close, and flatten with a twist. So wrap and flatten at the same time, that end. Flip it over, wrap and flatten at the same time. I'm going to tidy this up, snug, snug. Flip it over, tidy it up, snug, snug, and then I have another ring. Now, the first time you do this, it's going to take you forever, and you may have to start over again, because that wire has a mind of its own. <laughs> it just, the first time you do any wire wrapping, it's just going to go crazy, and you're going to get frustrated. But just keep at it. You can always start again. And the more you practice, the better it'll get. Thank you for um, being with us today for our craft video. We'll see you for the next one. And in the meantime, you can always go onto the library's website, Hoopla and Axis 360 on our eCommunity tab do have some craft eBooks. So try those out. Thanks. I'll see you next time. Bye.